Your nominees are Valerian Balligan, Eunice Musa, Ricardo Pepe, Christian Pulisic, and Matt Turner. Who are you taking? All right. Let me just uh, say it's, uh, well, first off, it's Ricardo Pepe. Uh, let's get that out of the way right now. Ricardo Pepe, come on down. He is your U.S. Men's National Team Player of the Year. This man scored seven goals in, in 10 appearances. He played, I'm um, checking, 364 minutes total this year. That's a goal every 52 minutes. Oh, and by the way, he did the majority of his damage coming off the bench. Disrespected, not taken to the last World Cup. How does he respond when he finally comes back to the U.S. Men's National Team? Lead the team in scoring. Every time you get on the field, prove why you should be there. All be why being a kid 20 years of age. Ricardo Pepe is here to stay. And, and I don't want to hear anything about is he or is he not the player of the year? He is. And I don't want to hear anything about should he or should he not be in the debate as the starting nine? He should be. And here's another thing, okay? Ricardo Pepe, take it. Run with it. That's you. You've earned it. Nobody's taken this from you. But can I say how ridiculous it is that Anthony Robinson, Anthony Robinson, isn't one of the nominations here. And this is nothing against Fowler and Balligan, but Fowler and Balligan scored two goals total for the U.S. men's national team. And in those performances, didn't look like he felt comfortable. Anthony Robinson's had a banner year for club. Keep the club out of it if you want, mm -hmm. if you want, and country. The man, when he's been on the field, the U.S. men's national team only had one goal scored against them. And that was when Serginho Des got red carded in Trinidad. He's a force to be reckoned with down that left-hand side. He's even chipping in with some goals and assists. I thought he had a banner year, mm. and I could not believe he wasn't one of the nominees. It's a good shout. It's that anti-defender bias that we never, ever succumb to here on Football Americas. My pick you goes just did it with to Naomi Christian Pulisic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. There's one example. But that wasn't anti-defender. That wasn't anti-defender. I'm going Christian Pulisic, man, and I'm leaning on the productivity here. Numbers are pretty clear. Eight appearances, six goals, three assists. Can't shake a stick at that. You got the CONCACAF Nations League title. You got more big moments against Mexico. Not one goal, but two uh, in the CONCACAF Nations League semifinals on a pretty big night there uh, in Las Vegas. You got a great close to the year. Goals against Ghana, goals against Germany, including that one right there. What a beauty. Got a goal in the fall against uh, Uzbekistan as well. Already won it three times, Herc. Uh, in his career and only 25 years old. Who knows, one day they may have to uh, rename the award after Christian Pulisic. What do you think? You got any problem with my Pulisic vote? Listen, it's a fair shout because while Ricardo Pepe scored more goals, there was no person who had more impactful goals um, in moments, big moments, than a Christian Pulisic. Uh, and the big moments versus Mexico, the big moments uh, versus Germany, the bright spot, I should say. He is Captain America, uh, the face of, I should say, U.S. soccer. But I'm going to stick with Ricardo Pepe, but it's not a bad shot, and you're, you're probably right. By the time it's all said and done, they'll name the award after him. He'll be the all-time leading goal scorer. He may make a run at Landon Donovan's all-time assist record, which Neymar is just short of mm -hmm. on the world's uh, stage. So what can I say? I mean, right now, he's, he's doing everything right. There it is, our ballots for the 2023 U.S. Soccer End of Year Awards. You'll have to wait till uh, 2024 to find out who actually wins them.